Hey, what's going on, guys? Indy Pride here with Milk and Cookies Total War. And this is 50 Bomb. We just got done playing a 2v2 with a Stellar Fire and some other random. Um, and Stellar Fire is actually a really good player. You want to talk a little bit about him and then his army composition and the uh, army setup is basically what's going to be happening in this battle? Oh, sure. Well, Stellar was very active in Shogun 2, and uh, if you've ever versed him, you know he's an absolute bitch to verse. Like, he was Bojen, Bocav, avid user. He just he would kite you all day and had seemed to have infinite patience. So he's a very, very good player. And um, rather unsurprisingly, he picked Parthia in this game. So that was just like, oh god, here we go. And he does have a lot of horse archers. Three of these noble horse, which actually have 90 armor, incredibly strong against other skirmishing units. And then he brought a few um, skir uh, slingers and Eastern Spearmen, and then a bunch of Royal Cataphracts, and one uh, Camel Cataphract. He has one yeah. or two Camel Cataphracts, and that's yeah. a unit that I actually haven't had any experience playing against before. They are. Very good against, as anti-cav cavalry, basically you just charge them in with trample against any, any enemy cavalry, and they're going to do a really good job, because they basically give off that morale penalty, that fear aura to enemy cav, and it makes it very hard to win cav fights. So, even though I'm never going to buy Beasts of War, if I was going to buy it, it would be for the Camel Cataphracts, because I think they're an awesome unit. But uh, let's get into the replay now. You haven't pressed play yet, have you? Nope. Alright, 3, 2, 1, press play. And let's get into it. Okay, so my army composition in this game is going to be revolving around Cataphracts. Of course, when I bring Bactria, I love these heavy Cataphract builds. So I have three heavy Royal Cataphracts, or Hellenic Cataphracts a African war elephant as my general, or Indian war elephant as my general, and then I have four pikemen, and three peltas, and then two Bactrian noble horse to round out my cavalry component. Now, the thing about the uh, Bactrian army compositions that I bring is that I really like to focus on the cavalry, obviously, and especially against Thrace, who I'm going to be up against at the beginning of this battle. They, I can really punish uh, the Adrusian Kingdom very heavily uh, for their army compositions because, as I've said before, the Thracian nobles and the Falks units that they bring are very susceptible to cavalry and skirmishing. And obviously I can do some skirmishing with my Peltas, but uh, heavy, heavy charges from Armored Cataphracts is going to be the name of the game here. So if I can get into his uh, Adrusian nobles uncontested, I can really put a harding on him, and that's going to be the uh, the main strategy that I employ. Now, you brought the Gatay this battle, so you want to talk a little bit about what your strategy is going to be? Yep, alright, I did indeed. Uh, I got three Dacian Yvian bows, three Folksmen, three Noble Swords, four Heavy Spears, two Noble Horse, and two Spear Horse. And uh, obviously I didn't know at the start who I'd be facing, but because I lined up against Stella, I was just like, well... He's not going to, you know, he'd be a fool to, to face me one-on-one, -on -one basically, and just let me charge him. So I figured I would get ahead of him and just pull back into this forest here, support Indy while he takes on Thrace, and then just... I was trying as much as I could to disrupt his skirmishes so he couldn't just sit there and shoot me all day. But, yeah, my main game plan basically was just to help you out, really. Yeah. So the game plan right here, I noticed that the Adrian Kingdom player left his archers pretty unsupported, honestly. And uh, this was definitely a huge mistake from him. It's going to allow me to punish him heavily just by sending in my cataphracts and my Bactrian Noble Horse from the flank. And I'm definitely gonna be able to kill some of these archers off before the battle even begins, or before the uh, melee combat even begins. And then after I kill those, I also notice that he has left his Thracian Nobles and a bunch of his Falksmen unsupported and he doesn't really have spears so I've routed those archers and I'm going to be able to collapse in. Now one thing that I will say is that I'm horrible with pike units. As you guys know they are not particularly responsive in Rome 2. Don't always listen to what you're trying to tell them to do and that's definitely going to be an issue this battle. I'll click attack orders and they won't necessarily move to where I'm I'm going and I, I feel very confident when I use heavy cavalry builds like I've said before but I don't feel like I do a great job microing pikes. So that's definitely one thing I need to work on. And you'll see oh, that this my- This is where the Falksman route, by the way. Yeah, one, so I'm gonna charge in uh. my uh, heavy cavalry here from the back and get in the Thracian Nobles and a bunch of these units. Now, 
I got good charges off, and I took out some of his units, but I was kind of surprised at how well the Thracian nobles survive these charges. They've only lost 30 men off the charge, which is kind of impressive considering how low their defense is. Yeah, but this I think this was a smart move from both of us because um, Stella's army hasn't got a whole lot in the way of infantry, so he it's a bit harder for him to support the Adrician kingdom, so we're basically... We just rushed straight in. He, he had his line a bit separated from Stella. And so we're just getting charges off everywhere. And actually, unfortunately, my folks went again absolutely boned. But that's because of all the skirmishes. They're, they're winning against the hoplites, but these skirmishes just off to the side are getting some sick shots off and absolutely tearing through them because they only have 10 armor. But um, yeah, Stella can only really support with his uh, cataphracts. I don't even... Oh, they're just sitting in a big blob at the back? No, that's the horse archers. I don't know. Yeah, they're well... Just, yeah. Well, one thing that Thrace, is, or the Adrian Kingdom, is definitely doing right now is he is very blobbed up, and he's not really committing his cavalry, which, again, is a mistake. I feel like he was kind of at a loss at what to do with them. Now, what he should have done is committed them to my Hellenic Cataphracts, because even though one-on-one -on -one they're not going to be able to beat Cataphracts in melee... Uh, they will be able to do a lot of damage backed up by other units, especially by Parthia, who over in the back here has gotten a Camel Cataphract directly into my Hellenic Cataphracts, and he's going to start winning this melee combat pretty soon here. So, I did try to reinforce with the Pikemen, but he's done a good job bringing over some Horse Archers. He's going to get rear shots off into them. Those Pikemen are kind of isolated at this point, and he's going to be able to do a lot of damage. But it's at this point, and this is a really... A turning point in the melee combat against the Edgerton Kingdom. I'm going to co commit my Indian Armored Elephants. You guys know what these, these are capable of doing. In a melee just engagement route, against route, infantry route. units, they just cause units to die. Yeah. Everything dies, basically. So, they've only been in combat for 10 seconds or so. They're up to 88 kills. And I did notice, though, and of course this is what a smart player would do, Stellar is going to start shooting in on them with the Slingers, so I have to pull them out. Try to get the elephants away so they don't run amok and start killing our own guys. And you do a good job, Indy. Well done. Thanks. So what are you trying to do at this point in the battle? Um, well, Stella missed Mike with some Eastern Spearmen, which was his only infantry support for his skirmishes. So I just wrapped him up, killed them off real easy. And I do make a mistake here because this is where I start to confront the cataphracts. There's only two of them here. I've got all my cav units, two spears to support. I was like... I can do it. I can do it, guys. I can do it. I can't do it. Like, <laughs> they just, they tear through me pretty, well, not quick, but they'll and get some these are spear horsemen so. or noble horsemen that you committed in the melee? Uh, there's two spear horse and one noble horse in there. Okay. And my genes are, he's going to come around the back eventually. Eventually, yep. He's coming on his way now. And I really thought these two units would die, especially with these two spears in here, but they just don't. So... That, that's just the staying power of cataphracts though, they, they don't quite die quick to anything. But, um, yeah. Yeah, so over back on my side in the cavalry fight, the camel cataphracts are really making their presence felt. They've routed a bunch of my Hellenic cataphracts and a lot of damage, and they are a really cool looking unit model, I must say. They really do look awesome. But, uh, so, a lot of my cataphracts have routed, so we're trying to just pull away from the melee engagement, and Parthia is going to try to reset as well. And it's at this point that I see that the Adrian Kingdom is committing his Thracian Royal Cavalry. And so I see an opportunity here. A lot of his cataphracts are tied up in melee. I feel like I can get a rear charge off, and if I can route this blob of cavalry, then we're going to just be able to win this whole battle very easily. So I try to commit with my Indian Armored Elephants, but they're very slow. As you can see, they're in red fatigue, and they're exhausted, they're exhausted yeah. so they're moving very slowly. And what was an opportunity for me to get a rear charge off is kind of going to fall away because they're moving so slow and he's going to be able to pull out. And my cab is about to route soon as well. So they're I was just going to go. Yeah, I wasn't able to get over there as fast as I wanted to. I am going to be able to get a rear charge off. The problem is, and I remember this from the actual battle, I, I did trample charge, and then they just did what you just saw there. They basically just stopped their charge. I think it might have been because I clicked an attack order on one unit and then shifted it to another one. But regardless, they got a really poor charge off, and I wasted the trample, and I wasn't actually able to kill very many cav units there. So that was definitely a mistake on my part. And now... Oh, that the was a sick camel charge. 
now you've got your noble swords isolated over here, and that's going to be an issue. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't that smart. I'm not, I think they were just trying to get to that uh, cab fight before it all sort of broke away, but as much like with your elephants, they were too late. I mean, the battle was over, and then at this point, I was sort of going, ah, crap. Because once again, exhausted. <laughs> Three units of cataphracts here. I'm just going, how am I going to get out of this? And unfortunately, I'm probably not going to the be able to. Yeah, the answer so. is that you're not going to be able to get out of it. So now, it's fine because these noble swords have already made their presence felt on the battlefield. They have 247 kills at this point. A lot of kills. They really did very well. But they're also at 130 men. So when you have a full strength unit like that, you yeah. want them to keep fighting because, I mean, 130 unit noble sword could kill a lot more men at this point in the battle unfortunately they're gonna get trampled charged lose about half the unit or maybe 25 percent of the unit off that charge and he's gonna try to pull away but of course you're not gonna be able to outrun cataphracts so yeah they're gonna die this is a shame a mighty shame and at this point i also just thought hey maybe i'll be able to take out a few of these folks when while i'm here but yeah it's gonna be a sandwich a nasty sandwich i hope you're getting this charge i will uh, sad face. So they're gonna die, and it's at this point that Parthia has the mobility. They still have the skirmish units. They still have the cavalry advantage. So we kind of have to just chill in the forest and have them. I wouldn't say waste their ammo, but we can't be standing on the open plain with all of these yeah. units. And we were just consolidating at this point as well, just getting everything in. Yeah. Sorting ourselves out. Yeah, it, basically, uh, I like to call it just like resetting the situation. Like, yeah, you kind of lose the micro after a while. Like, you'll kind of lose track of where your units are, and sometimes it's good to just reset your guys, pull them out of the fight, see what you have left, count your dead, and move on to the next engagement. Definitely. So that's kind of what I, we're going to be doing here. Yeah, I always, I always lose my groupings partway through. Eh? Like, if I, if I um, pull units out of groupings or put other units in that is different from the way I started, then I'm like, oh, what's happening? Where are these guys? I don't know. So, yeah. Yeah. It's good for this. So, yeah, you could probably say this is a new box here, but I'm not boxing with pikes. We're going to just wait, weather the storm, and we still have skirmish units, and that's our biggest saving grace right here is that yeah. your, th your heavy bowmen are going to be able to shoot out and kill these slingers pretty easily, and his slingers don't really have the armor piercing to be able to shoot into forest and still get kills. Yeah, and I had still about half ammo at this point, so that was that was pretty big because it meant that, well, we had the opportunity to actually compete in a skirmish battle. I mean, yeah, slingers would have more ammo, but still, it was good. I and am luckily for us, actually, sorry, that's that right. Stella doesn't just completely sit here and wait till he's used all his ammo because that would have been incredibly boring. Yeah, but. he has a full strength roll cataphracting you know, with two hundred twenty three kills. And then he has some noble horse archers, which are actually quite good in melee as well, so he'll be able to commit those. They're very hard to kill. Like, normally you think of horse archers, very glass cannon, like you can just kind of run through them very easily. With the noble horse archers, 85 health, 90 armor, yeah, they fight for a very long time. Fight. And they actually have a decent charge too, so not super easy to kill. And when he runs out of ammo, which he might be out of right now, he'll commit them to melee. I should have gotten this sooner. Falksman gonna get absolutely shredded by my Peltast and your Bowman. Yeah, and of course, buddy. with 10 armor, die very, very quickly. And right here, we're trying to catch Stella's general because he actually he charged into my heavy spear and I braced for it. But I mean, it's still gonna be a pretty big charge from the Royal Cataphracts. Yeah, and I try to I try to catch them with my armored yeah. elephants, but okay, again, they're exhausted, so they weren't actually able to close that gap in time. But they're closing the vice now. They've got us in a nice round. They've got Cav there, and they're going to start coming in with their Cav on this side as well. And they're just going to try to come in and surround us and cause a chain route. The good thing is we still have pikes left, so we can brace those in multiple directions. And I still have a full strength Indian armored elephant. So with the cataphract and the Indian armored elephant, going to blunt the charges of the enemy cavalry. And we should be able to do some damage in melee here. I actually turned skirmish off for my um, skirms here because because with this gen running around in there, I didn't want my guys just running in random directions trying to get away. I just turned it off and all targeted on his general to try and bring him down because obviously that was going to help us a lot. Um, these skirmishes will have very very low morale, even with the cataphracts actually. Just killing his gen would be huge for us, and we will see if that will 
improve. Yeah, so, these noble horse archers are getting pretty chopped up now, though. Yeah, I mean, they're committed against in Indian armored elephants, pikemen, yeah. and your spears that are not going to have a fun time. And it's no. at this point that we've basically won the battle. I mean, they got... I mean, we're surrounded, but we have much more substantial units left. They have yeah. half-strength cavalry units, and that's basically it. But I have full-strength pikes. Cavalry's obviously not going to be able to make very much of a dent on that. And then you still have some armored spears left and basically they're just gonna mass route pretty soon here yep there it goes Woohoo! and so what i feel like we were able to do there and i think it was partially due i mean of course if stellar had been matched with a better player i think it would have been an even closer battle and i don't think that the Edgerton kingdom player was a horrible player by any means but i think he did make some pretty big mistakes there in the beginning he let his bows. And just a bit too blobby, I think. He was very blobby, and he yeah. didn't commit his uh, cavalry into melee for a while. They kind of just sat there, not doing anything, when he could have engaged my cavalry when I came in from behind. He let his archers die, and look at that. Like, That's a lot spent on Thracian bowmen. That's probably... At least 1,200, wouldn't it be? Yeah, 1,200, and he got 46 kills out of 1,200 uh, talents. So not cost effective at all. And of course that happens with skirmishers sometimes, but you gotta do a better job protecting them. And I think actually the biggest issue here was that he did actually have five spear units, but they were all committed on the front lines, tied up in fifty bombs units. Yes. And if he had kept although, a couple of those behind, I think he would have been in much better shape. Yeah. And although my Folksman died really early and to those skirmishers, they still actually managed to get some decent kills, like 133, 80, and 113. And for you know four hundred talent units, that's that's pretty that's pretty cost effective. So I was pretty happy with that. I don't. Oh yeah, my noble swords did good, but that's I suppose to be expected. Yeah, they're a ridiculous sword unit. Absolutely. Yeah, they are really good. Two hundred sixty nine kills, two hundred and fourteen. That's pretty, that's solid, man. I mean, I was re honestly really impressed with the way Stellar utilized Parthia there, like. Uh, mm. Parthia again. I I love Parthia play, like the style of play. I think it's really fun. I don't personally like horse archers. I don't think I'm very good at utilizing them effectively. Yeah. He definitely did. 150 kills on every single one of his horse archer units. Yeah. Well, I think it just fits his play style so perfectly. Like I think you're a bit different, so it might not fit yours quite as well with yeah. the with the horse archers. But yeah, for Stella, that's just it's the perfect way to go. He's got great micro, and as I said earlier, he's got. Fantastic patience as well, which can really, really piss you off. And then you break and you make a stupid mistake, and then he pounces and he wins. And oh, life is hard. That battle, we made it hard for him, though. I think we had the army yeah. set up to counter it. And yeah. I think, of course, the advantage we had here was that we were communicating with each other, and that always helps in total war. So, hope you guys enjoyed that replay. Uh, you have anything left about that battle you want to say? Nope. Nothing at all. Well played, well played, good sir. And I hope you guys enjoyed, and we will talk to you all later. Peace out.